What's going on, my reefing fam? March here, Fragbox TV. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode. Mr. Diggs. Diggsy, what are we going to talk about? Fish tanks, because that's all we talk about here on our television channel. Is that what this is? I think it is. We call it Fragbox TV. Anyways, let's get right into it. I want to give you an update on our, this is what we call our display tank. Sorry to scare the fish. Our display tank here in the store. Um, you must know by now that we had a large system tank crash. If you don't know, I guess you're new to the channel anyways, I'm just going to give you the synopsis, the spark notes, uh, where our heater broke and took out the most of the tank with it. What I've done since that time, it's been about three, four weeks now, I've been water changing like a madman. So what does that mean? About a hundred sort of gallons a day I did for like the first week, like literally a hundred, a hundred, a hundred, just back to back like a crazy person changing the filter floss, changing, uh, not changing, sorry, rather cleaning the skimmer like nuts. So this actually ties into a larger system downstairs in the basement that you don't see. So up here it's, um, it's about 90 gallons and then it drains down through here into a large frag system and its own dedicated sump. This system runs separate from um, all the other ones in the store. It's its own little dedicated aquarium um, little setup. So what else did I do? Actually, I ran some, oh, hold on. Before I tell you about the carbon, I sent some water off to icpanalysis.com, these guys in the States. So what that is, is you send them your water and they give you back this 40 element test for all these um, components of your water you couldn't typically test. So like uh, coppers and, and potassium iodine, strontium and kind of weird stuff, uh, like just things that we don't have um, good test kits for some of the, like it just gives you a way way better medical like almost lab grade analysis of your water I really used to like the company but um, I don't know they're dicking me around the last two times I sent water I didn't get my results back so I'm not gonna do a whole rant again about them but I'm I'm not too happy with them because I called them and I got uh, virtually zero support they said kind of like tough luck we lost your water send us another one it costs money these things aren't free even though I own the store it doesn't matter I'm taking it off the shelf it costs my time too I got to ship it down I do it with FedEx Express I need the results I want the results and uh, I, I didn't get anything so I'm gonna try one more time I'm gonna give them one more shot I really was just curious to see where this tank is sitting in terms of heavy metals because after reading about you know people that have experienced sort of the same thing with a heater that has um, exploded or cracked or broken in the tank we get this um, heavy metals come out of the heater and contaminate the water so what I did to get rid of that besides the water change I ran heavy carbon and I ran both of these products that we carry here one claims to take out heavy metals right there and this one so that's uh, this poly filter they also say it does harmful organics toxic ammonia all forms of phosphate, medications after treatment. It, it sounds like a great product. Um, I really wanted to see if it worked based on the ICP number. So like send it in, run this, and then see again with another analysis if it lowered. This um, does the same thing, high uh, capacity metal absorbing polymer. So this I've used in the past. I know that this works. This one uh, I've used, but I've never actually tested it with an ICP test. Anyways, not to get sidetracked. Um, I don't have the results, but I did add it and I can tell you that just about everything that I've been adding slowly, slowly, slowly is looking pretty good. So I started with one zoanthid frag like a week after our debacle just to see sort of a tester. So that's this doggy. You're, you're in the way. Sorry, puppy. Go sit down. Okay. Let's talk to the YouTubers. I added this rainbow incinerator right here. That was about a week after. And it opened up pretty much right away. Same day, next day. I was a little bit surprised, to be honest. I was expecting to have, uh, I don't know what to say, like a few more issues. And then I went to a Monty just to see a testing piece, Mystic Sunset Monty. This is a really easy one. And I added a second one just as, um, as a, I don't know, as a control or whatever, just to see. And both of them pretty good. So I thought the water chains worked. I went and added a little Monty Pora Stellata. So I was looking for something that had good polyp extension, but in the SPS family. So this one came to mind because you can tell pretty much right away if it's happy or not. It's got these polyps that should stick out and be fuzzy and it's actually grown since I've added it. So you can see here on the edge, there's maybe 
I don't know, maybe four or five millimeters of growth. It looks like death, but on this coral, I can tell you that white on the tips is a good sign. So from there, I had the confidence to add some of this over here. This is some, you know what, to be honest, I don't know what it is. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm in love with it. It's like a leather or a uh, kind of like a nephthia or Kenya tree, but it's blue. So I don't really know what to call it. I may start calling it blue Kenya tree. Question of the day, if you know exactly what species of soft coral this is, I would really uh, appreciate the name. I added another one here because I am a coral crackhead. Oh, what do you know? Look at March. Another one over here. And I think I even have a fourth one. So I tend to do that with aquariums. When I like a coral, I like a coral. I love hard. Oh, there he is. There's the fourth one there. And I'll kind of go and plant three or four of them throughout the tank. So I added those again right away, opened right, right up. The fish look good. The water looks super clear. That's probably because of the amount of carbon. I added some snails. They weren't dying. I added this Mr. Skunk Cleaner Shrimp over here. So this is over the co course of the last three, four weeks, a couple more zoanthids on the bottom. These look a little funky to me. They were actually nicer looking than when they went in. And I think that maybe because the water is so, so clear from the carbon that they're just getting maybe more light. The light's penetrating the water more than um, they're accustomed to. I added some torches back to, this is kind of the same section I had the torch garden in last time on the right hand side of the tank. I did change the rock work too. Um, most people seem to like it. Tia hates it, but too bad. This one's my tank, so I'm going to let her have... She has free control over this aquarium here. This is a... We're revamping our Red Sea Reefer 250, and I've just completely given her the reins to that one. We're going to do Acro Dominated. That's going to be sort of her new little side project over there. But the torches more or less look really good. They're open. They're happy. They're healthy. I think we're past the, um, the worst of it, except for... Um, some acro. Oh, let me just touch on the pipe organ over here. Hammer garden is going to come back into play in this section. I think what I'm going to do this time is um, larger pieces and maybe less variety. I don't know if that makes sense what I'm saying, but you'll see as I kind of start to do it. I may revamp this too. So I kind of want, I want it to be a little less busy than it was last time. So instead of having 10 or 12 single heads of different colors of torch, it looks pretty cool. I'm thinking maybe do three larger torches. I'm gonna go even a little bit more minimalist than I typically do. Same thing over here for the hammer garden. So what I would normally do, I wanna build a hammer garden, kinda of like Dylan in his Fusion 20. And I promise I'm gonna buy one of those gimbals to make it very nice and steady as I, cause I do this POV style, right? When I walk around with the camera and I do read the comments and I understand that it may be a little shaky for some of you people. I'm trying not to be so irresponsible with the zoom and uh, I, I'm gonna grab a gimbal. So just bear with me, but as you see G Dylan's hammer garden over here it's phenomenal it's really nice he's done a great job it's probably 10 different varieties of hammer in there but it's um it's quite busy actually it's pretty cool it almost looks like it's one solitary you know one living hammer kind of unity like a body and it does look really nice but i'm going to take a different approach so um i don't really know what the the word is uh, when it comes to me I'll, I'll, I'll let you know, but instead of doing like that, instead of 10, 11, 12, 13 different hammers, I might just choose, you know, three or four larger, but of my favorite, really standout colors. So I still get that cool hammer garden kind of effect over here on, on this side of the tank, but a little less busy, a little less erratic than, than how I, I normally set up tanks. And then the same will go for the different gardens, you know, of, of acans, of frog spawn, of, uh, I'm going to do a lot of different gardens and I'm kind of being a little boring and I'm using the same spots because if you remember the tank at all from the other one, this was the spot of the hammer garden and this was the spot of the Aiken garden. But I know that the corals did well there just in terms of the way this tank is set up um, for light and flow. It took a little bit of trial and error. Like I tried to do a Zoa garden down over in this section and it just didn't take for whatever reason. It didn't, it didn't look terribly well. It didn't do really good. So I'm going to use some of the old blueprints and some of the old ideas I know sorry, where the corals will do well in this tank. So it's kind of going to end up looking a little bit like it used to, maybe subconsciously. I'm trying to get back to the way the tank um, looks. A lot of people didn't even notice that the rock work is absolutely all new. What do you guys think? Are you happy with the rock work? Um, I guess it doesn't really matter because I'm not moving it now. I stone fixed a lot of it. 
and I did marches typical to to rock kind of boring I've been called out on my boring skate many times in the past it's just what I'm used to I'm not the most creative when it comes to rock work I like seeing other people's tanks on YouTube on Instagram you guys do some incredible floating designs branching rock caves and structures I suck when it comes to that I literally just can take flat rock and stick them stick them like this and I almost always create two islands I think it's because I like this valley in between I don't know why when I see fish and, and corals and stuff this really makes uh, this is very reminiscent to um, certain places in the ocean that I've seen and I really really like the way that looks but it kind of dictates my rock and whatever I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's boring oh this is kind of cool I've always wanted one of these and I've never had one this is a Wantanabe Wantanabe angelfish so I believe this is the the female it kind of just looks like a really fancy chromis against these ones it's not getting um yeah it kind of blends in it's like the boss of the chromis but i'm looking for the matching male which i think is much much um, nicer if you watch any of the videos you know that i'm not the most knowledgeable when it comes to fish and it does have a little mm, little something something there on its back on the other side if it turns around it'll kind of give us a glimpse at it but i'm really becoming emotionally attached to this fish which oh there it is that little dot there on the back but i'm not really sure what it is uh it doesn't seem to be spreading it's been in here for a couple weeks i'm hoping for the best it's eating and it's a reef safe angel so you can add it to a reef tank and generally speaking it's not going to bother any of your corals i haven't seen it pick at anything um there's no guarantees though you know like there are a lot of fish out there are angel fish that they say are reef safe i've only had bad luck with angels uh, except for one potter's angel which I lost unfortunately a couple years ago and then so far this one but they can turn at any time one of the fox faces in this tank it's not uncommon I had to take out uh, one or two of them because it just took uh, a liking to the acans in terms of other fish as we sort of kind of repopulate I'm thinking maybe one more tang I have the tamini in here who's still quite small and then we added this nice uh, Hawaiian yellow over there in the back Mr. Yellow I really, really like wrasses, but we're trying, um, well, not trying, sorry, I don't have a lid on the tank. So the problem with nice, expensive wrasses is they usually end up on the floor, which sucks. And you lose the fish, the fish dies, and then everyone's unhappy. So it would be kind of irresponsible of me to add um, any, any fish that I know are, are prone to jumping. Okay, I got sidetracked like I normally do. I wanted to talk to you about one thing. I added some acro, so a piece of SPS. And it may have been too soon. So let me show you, actually, I think I have it over here. I put it aside in this tank. It's a, we call it a Green Dragon Tortusa. So why I went with Tortusa? Because it's typically a very easy species of acro to keep. Um, it's more forgiving than some of the other ones. At least for me it is. I've had very good luck over the years keeping Tortusa. Um, also Tenuous, Millipora. These are very common acros that we find in the hobby, in the trade. And they do um, fairly well for me. I'm just trying to turn off the flow here so I can show you what happened. But before I show you the Tortusa, I just turned off the flow thanks to my, my handy and trusty Apex controller over here. I'm going to give you a little shameless marketing plug. What? What's over this? What's going on over here? Beautiful clams. Just got these in from Australia. Some Maxima clams. Oh, a little cutie down there. Going to probably throw them on the site shortly. I like to let stuff acclimatize a little bit before we send them out. Some of these are too big. I might keep this one over here. This one is pretty cool. I know it's not the craziest color. Oh, let me see if I can focus in from the side. It's not, it's not, ugh, this is really dirty. Sorry guys. Okay, it's it's kind of brown, but um, brown corals need love too. Anyways, if you're looking for some nice clams, they're available right now in store. And there are, some of them are attached to substrate. And they're, they're a little bit bigger than normal, three to four inches. Anyways, I'm not trying to sell you stuff because most of our viewers are in the US. Anyways, this is a green dragon tortusa. At least this is what it should look like when it's healthy nice deep green let me show you over here under this light might be easier um, looks good it's got that cool kind of blue yellow sort of tip coming through so I took a piece of this and added it to um, the aquarium there and I'll show you what that one ended up looking like after only a few short days so yeah you can see nice deep green color there's no white tips look good and this is one that I added exactly this so it went in looking exactly the same and then it took about a week for it to look like this uh, not so hot side by side you can see it is showing some um, it's not really peeling so what happens with acro when it dies you have this tissue recession they like call it sometimes RTN which is rapid tissue necrosis or STN slow tissue necrosis this would might be 
closer to the slow tissue, but n not quite because it's not it's not peeling. So what what that means is that you'll actually you'll literally see the flesh peel right off. You know, like when you get a sunburn and it's really gross and gnarly, and then your skin peels off and it looks nasty. It happens with these guys, and we call it the same thing: peeling. That's really a very very bad sign. That that acro, if you don't take some serious action quick, you're usually going to lose it. It's kind of like a final ditch effort of the coral, but um. This is, it's not really peeling. I don't know how to describe it. It's like, I don't know. I really, I'm lost for words. It's like a whitening out throughout it, throughout the body. It's uh, definitely not healthy as you can see here. What it should look like and after one short week what this poor thing turned into. So maybe I rushed it. I should have um, not added that piece, maybe a smaller frag. Uh, I do expect it to recover. It actually was looking worse, so I took it out maybe a week ago. I wanted to give this tank a little more time before talking about it and getting uh, shooting this update video. So I was confident because of the Monty and the Stellata were looking so good and everything was looking good, I said, okay, let's try an acro. Obviously, it wasn't ready. It was in this spot here. I threw it in that little frag saver there. So I'm going to wait. I'm going to continue to do some water changes, run some more carbon. Uh, hopefully one day get some results back from my friends over at ICP. Hope you guys watch this video. Customer service, not so hot. But yeah, I'll try back maybe in another two weeks. I'll keep slowly adding corals. I am trying my best to be patient here. Uh, it's, I don't know how well that's going to go, but I, I am trying. I'm trying to keep myself busy with other projects. I needed to get some corals in here to feel like, you know, it was getting back to some form of uh, normalcy here in the store and here in this tank because it's really um, an important part of the store is well I think any reef store you walk into your reef store do, do, does your reef store have a nice display tank um, I, I would consider this one when it was up and running was really nice it's not the nicest but it's cool to walk into a store and see nice displays because it kind of shows you like okay you know these guys sort of know what they're doing this is in a, in a way uh, my resume, our resume here in the store, there's Dylan's resume and Tia's and Matt's and it's very easy to you know, set up a, a shallow frag tank and throw on some expensive high powered blue LEDs and, and watch these things glow. The turnover is high in here, right? So we're not, you know, you, you can't really tell if someone's keeping the stuff alive. You bring it in, you sell it, That's, it's, a, it's quite easy. But to, to set up uh, a mixed 100 gallon reef tank and have it thrive in colors and corals and fish and everything growing, it's it's a little bit trickier. So I think it's really nice to see. And when I'm ever, whenever I go to another store, another city, whenever I travel, I love, love, love going to reef stores and I love checking out their display tanks because everyone has a different style of doing it and I always walk away with an idea. So um, I think it's really important for not only for me and for the customers in the store, but also, you know, the brand and who we are here at Fragbox. I really want to get it up and running. That being said, I'm trying my best to be patient. So an example like that, that Greed and Dragon tort there, obviously the tank is not yet ready. There may still be some sort of contaminants or something in the water left over from the heater that's causing that piece to look like uh, crap. But I think that's about it for this update. I will sh maybe do one in another three to four weeks, unless you guys want to see one sooner. I will, I'm going to wait until there's actually something worth updating. I'm not going to do a video and say, oh, wow, look, we looked at another ZOA and it opened. Let me, let, let's uh, let it progress a little bit. I think about four weeks before we'll touch down and uh, we'll talk about this one again. But thank you very much for watching. If you guys like the channel, the content, what we're doing here, what we're trying to do here, go ahead and subscribe. As you probably already know, we try to do a video every single day of the week. I know it's crazy. We're crazy. I'm crazy, but that's fine. That's how TV works. That's why we call it frag box TV. You come home from work, you flip it on. What the hell is this crazy guy from Canada going to talk to me about for the next 10 minutes? Thanks guys for watching and tuning in to this episode of Fragbox TV.